Member, it's now time for member statement. The, the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Madam Yay. Speaker. Since 1993, March 22nd has been observed by all UN member states as World Water Day. Our province is blessed to be a world leader in freshwater with more than 250,000 lakes, roughly 20 per cent of the world's freshwater. And the word Ontario itself is said to derive from portions of the Huron word for Great Lake and the Iroquois word for beautiful water. Our government has and will continue to protect Ontario's waters. For example, in 2020, Ontario partnered with Pollution Probe to collect plastic waste from the water at marinas around the province using innovative plastic capture technology. In 2020-21, our government invested almost $11 million in more than 98 projects to help improve the health of the Great Lakes, including cleanup projects which prevented over 250,000 pieces of litter from entering Lake Ontario. We enhanced Ontario's water taking program and issued new guidance on managing water taking in areas where sustainability is a concern. Additionally, the Wetlands Conservation Project uh, Partnership Program invested $15 million to protect, restore and rehabilitate over 2,600 hectares of wetlands across Ontario. The Great Lakes provide drinking water directly to 60 per cent of Ontarians. Ontarians' Drinking Water Program framework received an A rating from Echo Justice Canada's Drinking Water Report Card as it implements the most ambitious source water protection program in Canada, with some of the strongest protections available. On this day and every day, we will work to protect this great resource for future generations. I invite all members and all Ontarians to raise a glass to toast Ontario's fresh water. Happy World Water Day. For statement, the member from Mishkagoa, James Bay. Well, see. Thank you. Scott First Nation and the disappointing neglect they have been facing with the government for over 30 years. I was just up in Ottawa Piscat last week with my staff to offer a clinic and meet with Chief and Council. Chief Sylvia and Council are very discouraged, and were the, uh, and as were their predecessor. They have been asking for help and address the housing crisis and the development of their community for years. Multiple meetings, emails have been exchanged with no advancement. In 2024, uh, 14, sorry, 2014, a, just, a, a joint task force was established with Ottawa Piscat First Nation, both federal and provincial government, to address their requirements. In 2018, a joint task force established a memorandum of understanding to govern their meeting. In 2019, a renewal relationship come in and was signed to ensure the advancement of working relations signed by the Honourable uh, Minister Rickford, Mr. O'Regan, and Chief Ignis Gall. In 2023, here we are. In the same place, with no advancement and nothing to show other than word exchange of words. The community is currently landlocked, given its geographic uh, disposition. There's only two ways for them to expand. Option one, remove dispute on the road be to, due to the De Beers mine. Option two, relocate the airport. They're offering solutions so that they can expand their community and address their issues, yet it's falling into death ears. They are facing a housing crisis to the point where they do not have a single place of land to expand their home and infrastructure on their traditional territory. Quite ironic. And it is time to respect the Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member for Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. The Burlington Teen Tour Band is Canada's oldest and largest youth marching band. For over 75 years, the band has been a symbol of pride for the city of Burlington. They are known for their high-energy performances and their ability to captivate audiences with their intricate formations and synchronized movements. The Teen Tour Band has had the privilege at performing at some of the world's most prestigious events, including the Rose Bowl Parade, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the 75th anniversary of D-Day, and the 70th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Earlier this week, the band returned from their tour in Ireland, where they were in attendance for the St. Patrick's Day Parade and were named Best Band Overall. One of the things that sets the band apart is their dedication to excellence. The band spends countless hours perfecting their music and choreography. They are a tight-knit community of young people who share a passion for music and performance. Through their involvement in the band, these young musicians, my daughter was one of them, develop important life skills such as discipline, teamwork, and leadership. These skills will serve them well for the rest of their lives.
Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Constituents in my riding are struggling to make ends meet. More families are accessing food banks because the cost of food has skyrocketed. Many people are living in deep poverty. Seniors are cutting pills in half or skipping doses. They can't afford their medication and rent or food. We have a housing crisis in Windsor, Essex and across Ontario. Housing remains unaffordable and unattainable for many. Young people and families are unable to buy a home in the community they grew up in. The cost of rent has increased dramatically because rent control was scrapped by this government. More people are experiencing homelessness, yet shelters in my community aren't receiving the funding needed to provide supports. The Welcome Centre Shelter for Women says that 61 per cent of the individuals accessing supports are children and youth. The largest predictor of future shelter use is the children accessing those shelters now. Yet this government gives no thought to young people and their future. The people of Windsor West and across Ontario deserve a government that supports them and takes action to make life better for everyone, not just the wealthy friends and donors of the Conservatives. We need a budget that will bring relief for the rising cost of living. The Conservatives want the people of Ontario to settle for less, to think that this is normal. But we must demand better, because better is possible. We can double social assistance rates to lift people out of poverty. We can build more affordable housing while protecting green space. We can protect workers' rights and ensure that good-paying jobs are available to everyone. Budgets are all about priorities. This upcoming budget is an opportunity for the Conservatives to prioritize the people of Ontario. Maybe they'll do it for the first time in five years. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Giving back to the community and charity work is something that's truly close to my heart. Throughout the week of March break, my Brampton West Youth Council held a food drive. As we all know, food is a basic necessity of life, and yet there are so many people in our community who struggle to put food on the table every day. Fortunately, we have the power to make a difference. By donating non-perishable food items and volunteering our time, we can ensure that everyone in our community has access to high, healthy and nutritious meals. By coming together as a community, we can make a real difference in the lives of our neighbors. Mr. Speaker, I'm so proud to have such a wonderful volunteers as part of our team. Their willingness to help and their unwavering support has been instrumental in making this food drive a success. I would like to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude for your incredible efforts during our Brampton West food drive and all of those who helped out, helped out either by donating or volunteering. Thank you for making such an impactful change in the community through your kind actions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. This morning I was on the phone with Jima Craig Nuchtai, the chief of Atikamashin Anishinaabek. His people traditional territories are home to almost all of the mines in Nickel Belt, mine that plays a big role in this government upcoming budget. Jima Nuchtai and his council were invited to an information session on Bill 71, the Building More Mine Act. They put a lot of time and effort preparing for this information session, as Bill 71 will have a multi-generation implications for their people. Jima Nuchtai and his team were shocked when the government declared after the start of the information session that this virtual meeting would satisfy the government duty to consult First Nation on Bill 71. Jima Nuchtai said, and I quote, I told them that consultation should have started when the proposed changes were first conceptualized so that we could truly participate in drafting legislation that directly affects our lands and rights. I agree, Speaker. This government has a duty to consult First Nations. Why are they not taking this responsibility more seriously? Why is it that this government seems bound and determined to continue to treat First Nations with such disrespect? This has to change. When will this government consult Atik Machine and Ishnabek on the changes to the Mining Act? Member Statements. The member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you, Speaker. I would like to wish a, good, a happy Francophonie Day, not only to Francophones in Ontario, but Francophones in all the country. I would like to thank the Minister of Francophones Affairs. We received 
representatives from different francophone organizations of Queensburg. And I want to thank also my colleagues and my that make part of a group of Ontarians that we call Francophiles. I also participated from an event and I had the opportunity to gather with several Francophone representatives. Speaker, there were several activities to celebrate Francophonie and we had the chance to be invited to the event hosted by the Lieutenant Government. where we received a series of guests. And again, I would like to congratulate again the Francophone community of Ontario, who work significantly to have an effect on the life of several people. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning, everyone. Imagine waking up to the sound of cracking thunder and pouring rain in the middle of the night. You just can't sleep, so you tiptoe downstairs to the basement to watch some television. Here you are met with ankle-deep water and maybe even sewage soaking your freshly carpeted floors. This comes as a complete shock. You don't live near any floodplains, rivers, or streams, so you never expected a flood in your home. Why would you? You try your best to subdue the damage with, by using towels and sandbags, but there is nothing you can do besides wait for the downpour to be over. You sit and watch your possessions decay and the for, await the $43,000 price tag to clean up your basement. Basement flooding is not normal, and, but it is common. All of this could potentially have been averted if Bill 56 was law. It's time for proactive solutions, Mr. Speaker, not reactive measures. Flooding is the most common disaster in Canada and now costs Canadians more than any other natural disaster. Bill 56 will save your constituents and you from unnecessary hardships financially, physically and mentally. I know this issue is close to home for many of you as you have shared your basement flooding stories with me personally. By implementing this bill, money can be saved and headaches can be avoided. Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I want to sing the praises of two young ladies from my riding. On March 5th, Tatum Hat Hutchison and Taylor McCallum won the Ontario Youth Bowling Championship and will be headed off to Regina in May for the Canadian Championships. Speaker, these young ladies are only 10 years old. They're the youngest bowlers from Peterborough to win an Ontario Championship. And both Tatum and Taylor started bowling around the age of four or five. For Taylor, this must be in her genes because She's following in her father's footsteps, who is also a former provincial champion. The girls have been bowling together for the last five years and have become great friends and partners. They attribute their success to collaboration, friendship, and the ability to not put too much pressure on themselves or one another. Speaker, that's a recipe for success that we can all learn from. Every Wednesday, they come down to Lakeview Bowl to practice. I know they're excited to represent not only Peterborough, but all of Ontario, and I truly don't want to put too much pressure on them, but Taylor, Tatum, I know I speak for everyone in Ontario when I say this. We are very proud of you, and we believe in you. No matter what happens in Regina, you are champions. From not only me, but everyone here in the legislature, good luck. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to appreciate the rich diversity in our Richmond Hill community. 
from celebrating the winter carnival to observing Nowruz and Ramadan, our community comes together to honor our inclusiveness. I want to acknowledge the Richmond Hill Winter Carnival that took place on February the 4th. Despite the frigid weather, our residents come together to celebrate the winter tradition and have fun. This is a tradition that residents in Richmond Hill has been celebrating for 54 years. Last week, I joined the Iranian community for various celebrations. I was happy to join Minister Parsa and Mayor Tom Maharakis and guests to celebrate the second anniversary of Bill 271 to recognize the Persian Heritage Month. I also attended the ICTC Youth Foundation Rus event. Today marked the beginning of Ramadan. May I wish, wish the Muslim communities in Richmond Hill and across Ontario the very best during this time of spiritual strength and personal reflection. Let us continue to embrace our diversity and working towards a brighter Ontario. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning.